Cam Jordan now joining us live. Seven Pro Bowls in 11 years. So tell me about Dennis Allen, because I don't know. He's been in the league. Why? I mean, he's a defensive guy. There's a continuity thing. Tell me about him. If I'd never met him, why will it work? I mean, he's been a, he's been a, a head coach before. Um, granted, that stint was with the Raiders. Now he's he's back in, a, in familiar grounds. Uh, he's had he's been a, you know the DC for the Saints for so long. Everybody knows exactly what he's bringing to the table. He's just that much of a of an X and nose guys where he can get the offense and defensive right. And I mean, he pays into he pays attention to the minor details. So I think that alone brings a lot of a lot of confidence into the locker room, and the locker room can carry the rest of that. I mean, he's even killed whether you know win lose or, or win lose or draw. You know exactly what you're getting from Da, and that level of consistency is huge. And when you're not riding this emotional roller coaster that I see or or talk to some players about, I don't have to worry about that. I know exactly what I'm getting from Da. By the way, Sean Payton retires. Sean is really intense and really brilliant, and there's no question. Were you a little shocked that he just— because A lot it, shocked. You weren't shocked at all? He's not a little shocked. No, uh, I, was, I wasn't a little shocked. I was a lot shocked. I mean, nobody, nobody like myself in the locker room saw Sean retiring. In my mind, he was going to be the, my head coach for my entire career— but that's not the way that works. I mean, the, the taxation of being a head coach, I'm sure, is, is extreme. Yeah. Uh, the dedication that Sean has to all the minutia of, of coaching is at the highest level. I mean, he's the best coach I've, the best head coach I've ever had. Um, and I guess he's the only head coach I've ever had in the NFL. That'll soon change. You can't replace a Sean just like you can't replace Drew. And in two consecutive years, we've lost two pillars of, you know, of the grounds the Saints were built on the last decade and change. I mean, um, for everything that he's done for organization, I can't, I can't do anything but say thank, thank you for everything you've done. And selfishly, as an individual, I'm like, why now? You know, every year we've been knocking on the playoffs. We've been in the playoffs. We've had, we've been poised to to have a Super Bowl run. This year we don't make the playoffs, but again, we we go through four different quarterbacks. You know, we go. Our top receivers down. Um, our offensive linemen are in and out. I mean, you know, we lose our starting guard. Uh, the games that we had, Trevor Simeon or Ian Book, we didn't even have a fully health, full, fully healthy offensive line to protect our our quarterbacks that are coming in. So it's not like you have a a, a, a stalwart offense as a whole and a healthy intact as a whole. So. You know, at the end of the year, we still go nine and eight. So you can't tell me this next year we're not poised for a major comeback, if you even call it a comeback. Because I think we were stout on defense. I think we showed potential on offense, and we always have AK. And I'll say, and when Mike T comes back, you can't tell me he's not a top five receiver in this game. Well, Cam, you've been in this NFL for over a decade, and so is Matt Stafford. And you were fortunate in that you inherited one of the great coaches ever, the Benson family, uh, very good front office. And I've, I've said this before, uh, uh, just the way it works in football and in life, what you inherit as a kid, as, as a college kid, as a, as a pro player, it has a disproportionate effect on how you're viewed. So for years and years, you know, you face Matt Stafford on the Lions in that culture, and now he goes to the Rams, and it's like, oh, it's like the Saints. This, 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 this family has their act together. When you watch Stafford now finally – getting an organization without chaos, with really good structure and continuity. Are you surprised that Matt is in the Super Bowl a little, or did you see it, that talent, when, he's in, when he was in Detroit? Um, I don't know. Look, when they talk about Matt being over at the Rams, they're like, now they're in the Super Bowl. Albeit the Rams were in a Super Bowl all of what two years ago, right? So it's not like he just inherited a non-playoff team. This is a team that has had you know Aaron Donald anchoring their defense and Jalen Ramsey uh, playing, being one of the top corners. This is a team that's been to a Super Bowl before, you know, with Jared Goff. So they they play they already had a playoff contention team. So again, it's a like 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 you said, he inherited. It's not like the Rams inherited Matt Stafford. It's the uh, it's a massive effort that got it got to have the inheritance of an already high playoff caliber team in the Rams. Yeah. So the Joe Burrow story is interesting because the Bengals, as you know, have not been a dominant team and, in fact, not been a competent team. So you see all these young quarterbacks. You face Kyler Murray. You know, you faced a lot of these young guys. I don't have your schedule in front. I don't know if you faced Joe Burrow yet in a couple of years, but when you've watched him play, what, as a great defensive player, what do you see with Burrow? Man, you know, it's a lot like uh, any good any good quarterback. You don't see him get rattled. I mean, 
you can't tell me he wasn't he, like he, he should have been rattled the Titans game when I saw his body uh, r- repeatedly hit the ground. <laughs> he was out there bouncing off the turf, uh, but he got up and made those phenomenal plays, those, those stretch plays that his team needed. Um, and he's also anchored by you know one of my former teammates, Trey Hendrickson, on defense. Yes, he's got a lot of great things going over there on defense that is that's definitely helping him out. But he's also got Jamar Chase. Uh, he's got Higgins. I mean, there's there's a lot of weapons for him to use. But albeit, my man has been playing outstanding especially in this playoff run. I don't know what it is about him. They call him Joe Cool, Joe Burrow. I, I like it because there's an LSU connection there, um, a Louisiana connection there, and you just think about what he's been able to do has been nothing short of impressive. I mean, he doesn't get rattled. I'm going to say that's the biggest feat. So <clears throat> when you look at this Super Bowl time a couple of weeks off, I cannot get over this fact. The Rams' best players are mostly veterans. Many of the Bengals' players are mostly kids. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Burrow. The coach is young. And I just, I, I, I look last year at the Brady, an older veteran team, the Patriots, older veteran teams. You tell me in Super Bowls and big playoff games, does experience matter or is it just a media narrative that's a bunch of nonsense? I don't, I don't know the winning formula to that. That's one stage I have yet to reach. So I'm not the expert on this one. When I look, when I look at my career, I've, I've made it to the NFC Championship. Um, this, this is the next level up. This is the final stop. This is the destination every football player hopes to get to. Um, I would say, uh, veteran leadership is usually, is usually his core values. But again, they have guys like Trey Henderson over there. They've guys, guys like Sam Hubbard. They've got guys like Von Bell, guys who've been in the league for a long time. If, 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 at least with the two former Saints have reached the NFC Championship game, have reached a high level of play. So they're able to stabilize. They're able to, uh, become those voices in the locker room. So, you know, you can, com- you compare veterans to rookies, rookies or young, young kids, uh, two, two, three years in the league, two vets. They've got a little bit of both on both sides of that ball so you're able to pull all that in and now you've got a super bowl run all right on behalf of hidden valley ranch show us your shirt uh yes new psa raising awareness. i mean again we we talk about we talk about super bowl sunday we talk about uh you know these two teams being high high powered offense high powered defense high powered everything else what in watching this game what are we going to be doing most we're going to be eating food watching the games as fans of the game and i mean what what food is going to be around that's going to be most available is wings let's just be real about this there's going to be tons of chicken wings there's going to be millions some would say 1.4 billion uh chicken wings being ate during super bowl sunday that being said how many of those wings are going to waste how many times have you looked over at at your aunt or or your nephew or your cousins or, or a couple of your friends that have been over and you see them half eating wings and you just you just look at them in disdain it's why i was able to partner up with hidden valley ranch um, to start up the coalition against wing waste. All you have to do is realize uh, and, and, and come together as a team, as a collective effort uh, to stop this this atrocity, heinous crime, <laughs> <laughs> this heinous crime of, of wasting wings. Um, and when you think about, you know, what we can do to stop this, I mean, you can go to CAWW.org and take a picture, uh, post, hashtag, uh, yes. stop wing waste, hashtag contest. Yes. You're able to put yourself into this idea of, of together we can stop yes. wing waste. Because, yes. I mean, let's just be serious about it. Yes. Nobody wants to see a half-eaten no, wing. Is- Finish your food. Let's yeah. let's all be great adults. Yeah. Let's stop. Let's help stop wing waste. Yes. I okay. mean, together. I'm just saying we can create. We can come together for a bigger cause. That's yes, it's Super Bowl. Exactly. Yes, it's game day. But again, we're we're, we're running on a shortage of, of chicken wings here. Yes. You know. Cam, so let's let's just come sales, together John. for one one heck of a cause. Yes. C A W W. Yes. Some Coalition one against wing waste. Huge concerns for me in America today, Cam Jordan. It's a pleasure to see you, my man. I think all Americans have to be concerned with this. Cam Jordan, very well. Good sales job. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.